Good morning, friends. Welcome back to the channel. Today is the day. This morning is the morning. We are up bright and early. I literally just woke up. I actually slept with my hair up and I never do that. I always take it down, but I was super tired last night. So I'm looking kind of crazy, but we are going to enjoy a yummy warm cup of coffee um, before we start getting ready and packing up the truck to head down for Joe's procedure this morning. For those of you that may be new to the channel or seeing this video for the first time, my husband Joe is getting a vasectomy reversal today because we are going to try to have one more baby. We have two kids already and we would like to try for a third. So we are Heading down on this journey, we've got three days. We have a drive, about a three hour drive. Um, listen to me rambling, I'm like, I need to drink my coffee. Anyway, we've got a long drive. We're about to hit the road in a little bit. <laughs> His consultation is today. His procedure is tomorrow. He actually has to be put under for the surgery and then he has a post-op the next day and then we come home. So very exciting and I have shared this journey with you guys so far and I wanted to take you along with us the entire way. All right, you guys, we are all ready. The truck is packed, the dogs are in the back and we're about to hit the road. So we'll see you guys in North Carolina. Look at me like I'm crazy When I shut my feelings out You look at me like I'm different Still you stay cause you feel something real Get so lost in my moments Doesn't mean I don't need you I, 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 I fell in love with your colors They kind of tell me what I'm thinking Fell in love with the way we are And the way we lose it There's something different about us And the reason why we stay Stay We fly around like paper planes They never know where we will fall Nobody can see us Still they wanna tear us apart There's something different about the way we are, are, are. Ooh, 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 ooh. There's something different about us. Ooh, ooh. All right, you guys. So we made it. We're here. A little stressful <laughs> with the dogs, I'm not gonna lie. Just because they're stressed out too, they don't know where they are, they're excited. It was a three hour drive. Um, we did stop and let them go to the bathroom when we got lunch at Denny's, but um, yeah, it's hot. It's very hot in North Carolina, just like it is in Virginia. So at least they have the carts downstairs, so we were able to put everything on a cart at once and bring it up here. We got their kennels all set up, so they should be good to go. We have about 10 or 15 minutes before Joe and I have to head out for his consultation appointment. Um, thankfully, the doctor's office is only like six minutes from the hotel, so he's got a few minutes to kind of sit down and chillax before we have to jump in the truck and get over to that consultation. And then his procedure is tomorrow. So tonight we are free. So we'll probably, um, I don't know, go for a walk. There's lots of restaurants and shops around here. Like we're in the middle of the city in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, take Parker to see some things, maybe even take him down to the pool. They've got a pool here in the hotel, um, but we've got a free night to do whatever before his surgery tomorrow. Oh, hey. Goodbye. 
right, so Joe's consultation went really well today. The doctor explained the process to us in depth, which was very helpful. <laughs> really hoping this works out oh, for everything Joe's having to go through. But we are so hungry. We just got Parker out of the pool and now we are kind of just walking the streets of North Carolina. I think I found a little steak house, like a little grill. Um, so we're gonna go down this way and see if we can get us some good food for dinner because we're all like really hungry. And Joe needs to eat a really good meal tonight because he was told he cannot eat after midnight because of his surgery. There's a new day that will come again tomorrow. There's a new day to wash away the pain. There's a new day to take away your sorrow. Washed out by the rain Darling, you got We are stuffed. So, it was a beautiful restaurant. I'm a little bummed though because like they were raving about their steaks. I got a filet mignon and I get it. What do I get, Joe? Medium well? Yeah, medium well. Just a little bit of pink. I don't like to eat the cow while it's still bleeding. It was totally bleeding all over the plate. Just like, ugh. Anyway, I ate the outside of it. Joe ate the bloody inside. Did you see them Brussels sprouts though? Y'all know me and Brussels sprouts. Oh, so good. So we're heading back to the hotel. Gotta take the puppies out to go to the bathroom. And then we're gonna turn in for the night. And tomorrow's the big day. Good morning friends so it is surgery day we just uh, woke up got the puppies fed they're eating breakfast right now and drinking my coffee my delicious coffee because I brought my French press and all my good stuff so I'm a little bummed though I meant to bring heavy cream and I accidentally grabbed the half and half <laughs> the heavy cream is just so creamy and delicious but that's okay Nonetheless, I've got good coffee. We have about an hour and a half before Joe and I have to head over to the surgery center for his procedure. And they said it could take anywhere from an hour and a half to three hours, just depending on once they get in there, you know, what they see and what, what all they need to do. So it uh, shouldn't take us too long, but I'm excited. I'm a little nervous for Joe. I feel bad drinking my coffee in front of him. He can't have anything to eat or drink, so. Yeah, so we're just gonna get this morning started and then head out for his procedure. Is that good, Ollie? Is that good? Oh, make sure you get every little bite. The hustle and bustle of the city life. Everybody's already awake. Parker, are you awake? <laughs> Barely. Good morning, Bobby. Mm. Oh my gosh. I can hear the dogs. The dogs every morning. It's like wrestle time every morning. <laughs> they're knocking things over. I mean, I'm glad that they're friends, you know, but it's like, come on guys. I'm still drinking my coffee. So yesterday they were explaining you know, the best deferens, which are the tubes that the sperm flows through. And basically with a vasectomy, those are cut, right? Um, so that the sperm can't flow through. So now what they have to do is they have to, oh my gosh, I'm looking crazy. Whatever. They have to cut off the ends where, you know, the scar tissue and everything is. So they have clean ends and then they basically reconnect them uh, for each one. So I guess in three months they want us to send a sample. I guess we can send it through the mail to see if there's any sperm 
And if not, they want us to resend another sample in six months, which of course we're going to start trying regardless as of August. Um, but he said today when he's in there, when he cuts off those ends, if he sees fluid, that's a good sign. That means there's no blockage anywhere in there, like scar tissue blockage or anything. Um, he says he may see sperm. He may not see sperm. He said people with the vasectomy tend to, their sperm production tends to decrease and it's going to take some time to get that back up. Um, he said that it takes like 15 million sperm for a pregnancy. <laughs> I was like, holy crap. I didn't even know there was that many of them little guys in there. Um, so I don't know. We'll see what happens. He said if there is no fluid in the lines, that's a bad sign because that means there could be blockage or something else, which would indicate that even if he repairs and reconnects the tubes, that there could potentially be blockage or scar tissue somewhere else that, you know, we're not going into like this investigative surgery to find it. He's going in to reconnect and that's it. So the hope is that when he cuts those ends to get the fresh ends, that there's some kind of fluid in there, even if there's no sperm, because then that means that the, uh, the tubes are clear. So that's a good sign. So that's what we're hoping for today, guys. <laughs> it's crazy when he was explaining everything. I'm just sitting there kind of mad at myself and Joe. I mean, not mad, but you guys know what I mean. Like irritated that we even did this to ourselves. I think I was, I'm 40 now. So I was 34 when we did the vasectomy. Um, but it's just like we did it and now we're having to do this to undo it. And it's so funny. Joe's like, I don't care about the procedure. I just care about the money. Right. And I'm like, I don't care about the money. I just care about the procedure. I hate to have Joe go back in for another surgery just to undo what we did, but I guess we got to do what we got to do. Right. And in the end, if this is what God wants for our family, it'll happen no matter what, even if there's 13 million 500,000 sperm, right? Good morning, Joe. Joe. Huh. Good morning. Huh. <laughs> how are you feeling, Joe? Fine. Can you tell everybody how you're feeling this morning? Fine. Fine? Oh, you got him. Are you nervous? You're not nervous at all. Really? You're so brave. Are you hungry? I'm gonna be sleeping. Huh? I'm gonna be sleeping. You'll be sleeping? Is that why you're not scared? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're so brave, Joe. Mm -hmm. You know? Are you hungry? No. Yeah. I think this is what he had to do for the sun. It'd be nice to just have a cup of coffee, huh? Yeah. Well, maybe tonight you'll be out of your anesthesia and everything good enough to where you can eat something, huh? Oh, I will be. Huh? I will be. Oh, you will be? <laughs> hey, boys, good talk. Good talk. That's why I'm I hate to play electronics. Angry birds. Huh? I'm trying to play Angry Birds. Trying to yeah, play Angry, Angry Birds. Birds. Okay. We gotta leave in 10 minutes, okay? We're here. <laughs> We're about to go in. Stop. Why are you doing that? Joe's excited. Can't you tell? <laughs> Wish us luck. Send us prayers. We'll be out soon. <laughs> you got a big old ring on your head now. Let me see your arm. Babe. Which arm? Why are you? Okay. That's definitely not how you're supposed <laughs> to wear it. What? This will keep all the hair in. Babe, let me see your arms. Pop. So, hair okay. Babe. Yeah, we'll see. Babe, take that off your face. That's what I want to see. <laughs> Jeez. All right, let me see your little arm. Can you give me a little smile? Just get a little shot of the nap. You want to do Virginia or you want to do Alaska? It's up to you. Well, why don't we do Alaska since we're only here for two more months?
sipping on some chicken broth. Is that good, Parker? Mm -hmm. Parker's in here taking care of daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Eating all the soup. How you feeling, Joe? Okay. Feel good? Mm -hmm. Is that good? I don't know. I haven't had it yet. Mm, careful, it's hot. Mine isn't as warm. It's good. Yeah, I didn't make yours as hot, buddy. I like it not so hot. I'm so exhausted. I Okay, so bringing the puppies was is difficult. But we don't have a dog sitter. And, you know, the thing is, is they're actually really good. They're kennel trained. They're, they're so good. But the problem is we are on the fourth floor in this hotel. So every time they have to go to the bathroom, we have to get in the elevator, go downstairs, go across the lobby, go across the street to this grassy dog area. So it's not like this quick thing. It's just a struggle. So I'm having to take them one at a time. So that's like you know, one dog goes down, bring it back up. Next dog goes down, bring it back up. So it's just like this whole evolution every time the dogs need to go to the bathroom. I mean, other than that, they did really good. Um, but it was like, as soon as I got back from the clinic with Joe, I knew the dogs had to go to the bathroom because they'd been in here for about four hours without going. And with Gunner being a puppy, he's got to go more often than Ollie does. And so it was like getting Joe settled in I had Parker keep an eye on Joe and then I took all the dogs, you know, took the dogs out and then I'm like, what are we going to eat? So that's one thing I didn't take into account was today, like surgery day. Joe is supposed to do nothing but clear liquids for the first six hours as he's waking up from his anesthesia, Gatorade water, maybe some chicken broth. But I'm like, I don't have any chicken broth. <laughs> so thankfully there's a grocery store next to the hotel. And I walked over there, picked up some groceries, got some um, organic chicken nuggets to make Parker, some strawberries, and just like an easy dinner tonight. But I got back in here, you guys, and it's just blazing hot outside. It is so freaking hot. I was like dripping sweat. <laughs> I'm like, I told you, I'm like, I just want to sit down. And then Joe is like Mr freaking, I don't even know what you would call him, Mr. I'm, I can do everything. I'm King Kong. We're like getting him dressed. The nurse and I, after his, and after his surgery, you know, he's like groggy, stumbling, waking up from anesthesia. And she's like, all right, help him get his clothes on, but don't let him pull his shorts up by himself and stand up on his own. Call me back in here when you're at that point, me and you will help him stand up. Joe just stands up. He's like, well, I got to put my shorts on. I'm like, would you stop? This fool is like, um, the lobby has a wheelchair. So I pull up to the front of the hotel. I want to get the wheelchair because he doesn't need to be walking through the whole lobby, up the elevator, down the hall to our room. I'm like, they have a wheelchair for a reason. And he's like, no, I can walk. And I'm like, oh, Joe, you're killing me. So talked him into the wheelchair. We got him up here safely, obviously. And he's just chilling with Parker watching TV. I think I'm going to, um, have some hard salami with some cheese that I got and then make a cup of coffee. And we're going to just relax tomorrow morning at nine 30 is his post-op appointment. So we will go meet with the doctor to check everything out. Um, as far as the surgery, the doctor said everything went really well. So the left one, the left tube, there was actually sperm in there, not just fluid. There was actually sperm. So as he's doing the reversal, he takes a sample and puts it under the microscope. And he said there was actually live sperm in the left one, which is fantastic news. He said, you don't always see that. Sometimes you just see fluid. Sometimes you don't see anything like I was telling you guys. And so at the most, I was hoping to at least see fluid. Well, he said in the left one, there was actually sperm, live sperm. And the right one, he just saw fluid. So I'm not surprised because Joe had a hernia back in 2016 when we built the first farmhouse. You guys might remember that story. We cleared the three acres on our own with a riding mower, an ax, and a machete. Uh, and Joe got a hernia out of it. So he had some complications with that hernia and that caused a little bit of issues today during his um, procedure for the reversal. The doctor had to kind of go in and find it. The two wasn't, you know, where it normally is and just 
some extra scar tissue and stuff like that. So the right one, we're not 100% sure how successful that side's gonna be. He said he did get both of them clean cut, connected back together, um, but he just struggled with the right one, so we're not 100% sure on that one yet, but the left one is for sure good, and there is sperm, so I don't know, you guys. Once again, I go back to the Lord. <laughs> I'm like, all this doctor talk, all this, you know, it is what it is. And we've we've put Joe back together again, and now it's in God's hands, and we'll see what, what happens. But it went well. It was successful. The doctor was very happy with the way everything turned out, and he seems to think that um, Joe's going to do great. So I'm happy, but I'm tired. So I'm going to go eat some snacks and go have some coffee and chillax, and I'll get back with you guys a little bit later. All right, so as you guys can see, we're back home. We are safe and sound, back home in Virginia. So what had happened was I had intended on filming that whole last day of, oh, let me straighten you out real quick. I had intended on filming the whole last day of our trip there in North Carolina, the trip home, um, even our post-op appointment just for Joe's little checkup after the surgery. Yeah, that, that, that wasn't a good day. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, his um, after appointment went great. They inspected him and he is healing and recovering fine. A little bit of swelling, definitely some bruising, but that's normal and to be expected. Other than that, Joe is just on the mend and he's doing fantastic. Like he was up walking that same night after the anesthesia wore off and just doing really well. So I'm super grateful for that. The first morning in the hotel, I woke up and I was like, oh dang, I think I slept wrong. Like my neck was hurting. The next day, the day of Joe's surgery, it was hurting really bad. And I was like, it must be the pillows in the hotel. I didn't really know for sure what it was, but I had a really bad neck ache. You guys, when we got home, the first morning home, I, I got up, I sat up in bed like I always do, and as I sat up, I felt something just rip through my neck all the way down into my upper shoulder blade. And I started crying. I've never had this happen before. Joe's like, oh my God. And he had to help lay me back down because any movement I made was excruciating. Even the weight of holding my head up, sitting up in bed, was excruciating. I, the pain was so bad I was shaking. So he got me laid back down. He made me a rice sock. Isn't he sweet, you guys? He's so good to me. We didn't have a heating pad or anything. And so I'm alternating between ice packs and a hot rice sock. He took one of his socks, filled it with rice, and you put that bad boy in the microwave and that rice holds heat for a long time and it felt so good. Needless to say, I was laid up for two days straight from some kind of neck injury. Ibuprofen all throughout the day just to manage the pain couldn't get off the couch. So here I was supposed to be taking care of Joe after surgery and Joe was taking care of me, cooking, taking the dogs out to go to the bathroom. It was horrible. I am just now feeling better. I actually woke up this morning and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't feel anything. But somehow I injured my neck and I think loading all the suitcases and the kennels and the dogs and just dealing with everything, I think it was too much and I think I just made the injury worse. So. It's not been a very good couple of days since we got back from North Carolina, but I'm all better now. Joe is actually in the office today, so that tells you how well he's doing. He is uh, doing great. He's got to wear a jock strap for two weeks to, you know, hold things in nice and tight because there are some stitches in there, so we don't want a lot of movement. After the two weeks, he can take it off, and then he's basically back to normal. And then as you guys know, after two weeks, we have the clear go ahead from the doctor to start trying to have baby number three. So I'm really excited. Had fun taking you guys along with us and I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you enjoyed us kind of opening up this part of our life to you and just sharing it. You guys, we share so much here on our channel. Um, our homeschool, our big move to Alaska, some of our marriage things. Like we share a lot here on the channel. I wasn't really going to address this because it's actually so stupid 
it doesn't really even deserve to be addressed in my opinion. However, since there is obviously some people out there that are wondering why in the heck Joe and I would share the fact that he and I have decided to have a vasectomy reversal and share his surgery journey and share the recovery and me even sharing how I'm tracking ovulation, tracking to get pregnant, all the things, right? Apparently some people think that that is way too personal and we should not be sharing that here on our YouTube channel. I've had a couple people make some comments and when I say a couple, it's been a couple. The majority of you guys are just awesome. Um, I was actually reading, Joe, your comments the day of surgery, just the prayers and encouragement. Even some of you out there that have had a vasectomy and a vasectomy reversal, you were sharing your success stories with us. That's so encouraging. Um, I don't know how else to say this. You guys know me. I'm just going to put it out there. I'm going to be blunt. I'm going to be real. It doesn't need to be this long, drawn-out thing. If you think something I share here on my channel is bad, you should listen to my podcast. You'd really flip your lid. If you feel something is too personal and you don't care for that content, there's a really cool feature on YouTube and it's called unsubscribe. It's just a click of a button. It's pretty simple, right? Just click unsubscribe or just if you're not subscribed and you just came upon the, upon the video and you don't like it, scroll. Just go to the next one. Go to somebody else's. Totally fine. Not going to hurt my feelings. But here's the deal. This is our channel. This is our life. This is our choice. And if we want to share this journey, just like we share our homesteading and homeschooling journey and our whole journey and adventure to go to Alaska here in a couple months, that is our prerogative. If we are comfortable sharing certain things with you, and we don't find it to be too personal, then what's it to you? What about it? Like, I, I'm so confused right now on people that have sent me some comments that are like, oh my God, like I love your vlogs and stuff, but why would you share something so personal? <laughs> Come on, seriously? Seriously? Go somewhere else. This is my channel. Go start your own YouTube channel. Hey, there's a thought, right? It's just blowing my mind, okay? Trust me when I say there's a lot of things that I have not shared with you guys, even on the podcast, and I'm very transparent on the podcast. There's a lot of things that I do keep private in our marriage, in our home. The things I share with you are things that Joe and I have discussed in depth and decided we're comfortable sharing it and we want to share it. So know that. Know that we're okay with it. We're comfortable with it. It's our choice. And if you don't like this kind of content, these lifestyle vlogs or what we're doing in our life, you are welcome to leave and it's not going to hurt my feelings. But what I'm not going to do is sit there and entertain hateful comments. I'm just not going to do it. So, you know, I, I had somebody post a comment yesterday and I've told you guys before, most of the time I just... You know, it's like water on a duck's back, whatever, right? You can't make everybody happy. You're always going to offend somebody. Someone's going to love the content. Someone's going to hate it. Someone's going to love our decision. Someone's going to have an opinion of why we shouldn't try to have another baby. We've heard so many things about us going to Alaska. Like, why would you do that? Oh my God. Like, okay, shh, calm down. It's our life. That's why. We get one life to live, y'all. How many times have I said this? One life to live. And we want to do everything we want to do while we're here because we only get one chance to do it. Yesterday, Joe and I, you guys might know if you watch the channel and you check the community wall when I post things, Joe and I are starting to clean out the apartment because believe it or not, in just six months of being in this apartment, we've already accumulated so much crap that we don't need. That's not going to fit in the cabin in Alaska. So we're kind of starting to go through the kitchen cupboards and the pantry and all the things. And we decided to go through our picture box. We have a humongous tub that has pictures, our kids, um, you know, pictures that they've colored for us through the years, our old report cards as children, things like that. Joe and I were laughing because we came upon his report cards from high school, even some from elementary school. And it was, it was so funny to us that his grades defined and really, not defined, um, described him to the T. 
English, fail. <laughs> Math, he might have got a D. Um, history, a D, like whatever. All the subjects, right? And the teacher's comments were things like, Joey, Joey is really great when it's a subject that he's interested in. Joey really needs to work on his communication skills. Like, right? So this is Joe. You guys know that you've been a part of our channel. Joe is a super quiet dude. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. We're all different, but it's just funny looking at the report card and the notes from his teachers, how much it reflects uh, the man that he is today. Uh, Joe's just not a talker. I mean, he's got a wife that does all the talking, right? <laughs> I talk enough for both of us, but we, Joe and I were laughing about it. And I, t I screenshotted his report cards and put them on uh, the YouTube channel. And we, I said something to the effect of, um, you know, what was funny is that he did bad with all those subjects, but when it came to woodworking, cabinetry making, welding, those kinds of classes, Joe was like in the 90%. That is Joe. And my comment was not to tear my husband down. And again, if someone took it that way, you don't know me, you don't know Joe, you don't know our family, and you obviously don't watch a lot of videos on our channel. That post was not to tear him down. I was actually uplifting him in the fact that book smarts isn't everything, right? Like, I hope I don't, gosh, I'm always offending somebody. I don't want to offend anybody if you have pretty hands, but I don't want to be married to a man with pretty hands. I don't want to be married to a man that doesn't know how to work a hammer or change a tire for me on the side of the road. That's not the kind of man I'm into. Joe's hands are so rough and cracked and have oil stains in them. And I love it. It just, it provides the best back scratch. <laughs> so it wasn't to tear him down. It was to say, Look, look at this. The standard and the norm in the culture is that if you don't get these kind of grades or you can't pass these tests, you're a failure, you're not good enough, and you'll never amount to anything in your life. That's not my husband. My husband is creative, he's handy, he's innovative. He blows my mind with the greenhouses that he builds from the ground up, the angles, the cuts, all he has to do is imagine something and he can do it. He fixes everything. Our cars need maintenance, Joe takes care of it. I am so grateful for the husband that I married. That's all the post was about. And giggling, Joe and I were just laughing like, oh my gosh. <laughs> You didn't like English, Joe? Hmm, that's strange. The teacher says you didn't turn in one, one assignment that year or you didn't turn in your essay. That's Joe. So that was the post. But then I had somebody come along and leave a really nasty comment. And it's so funny because after the nasty comment, she says, you know, I don't mean to start a war. <laughs> it's just a rhetorical question. Apparently, she's had issue with the fact that I'm sharing our vasectomy reversal journey with you guys because she commented on the report card post, but it wasn't just about the report card post. It was also going into Joe's surgery. I won't even read the beginning of the comment because really it was, it didn't make sense to me and it's kind of like she was just prepping it with a bunch of nonsense so she could like come in with her jab at the end. She says, I hope your husband gave permission to share his private information. If my husband shared something like this about me, I'd certainly want him to ask me. Between this and the recent surgery facts and gown photos, I'm wondering how you'd feel if your daughter-in-law shared these things about your son. I don't want to start a war, just a bit of a rhetorical question. I posted my response to that. Well, let me, let me just, let me just say something like, <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm like, y'all, sometimes I get these comments and I'm looking at my phone and I'm just like, what? Again, Susan Smith that left me this nice comment. This is mine and my husband's YouTube channel. Everything we do is in partnership. I don't share anything about 
our marriage, about Joe, about anything without his blessing. That's to include the podcast where I show a, I share a lot of struggles that we've had in our 23 year marriage, getting married in high school, not knowing how to do marriage. It's been rough. The reason we share these things is because marriage is hard. Life is hard. We learn, we grow, we make mistakes, we do better. And sometimes it's really nice to know that you're not alone. I come to YouTube a lot. When we were researching what kind of puppy we wanted to get, we went to YouTube. We watched a lot of different videos, a lot of different reviews on different kinds of breeds. Joe's trying to learn how to train the puppy to walk better on the leash. We go to YouTube. You can learn so much from YouTube. When I wanted to learn how to track my ovulation, right? So Joe and I could be more on purpose about getting this done as soon as we can because we're already in our 40s, I went to YouTube. And because some woman was kind enough and I suppose courageous enough to share how she tracks her ovulation by peeing in a cup twice a day and dipping a stick, she didn't feel that was too personal or she wouldn't have shared it. And because she was courageous enough to put that out there, it was so unbelievably helpful to me. And I will tell you guys, on our homesteading journey, I learn from other people just like you do. I get encouragement, inspiration, ideas, right? That's what we find in community. And my hope is that we can offer that to somebody else, whether it's homeschooling, homesteading, lifestyle, marriage, raising babies, whatever it is. That's all my hope is. Joe and I don't for one second feel that this is something we should be ashamed of. Oh my gosh, Joe got his tubes snipped once before and then he got them connected back together. Oh, did you hear? It's not a secret. It's a surgery. Who cares? People do it every day. I shared with you guys, I got breast implants and then I decided to remove them in 2020. And again, I watched women on YouTube that had the same experience. And do you know what I got from those women? I got the courage. It helped give me courage and inspiration and, you know, whatever. Encouragement is what I got. I don't need them. I don't need these things. I thought I did 15 years ago when I got them, but I don't. Look at her. Huh. She got hers taken out. She's fine. She's still beautiful. The world didn't end, right? We all find encouragement and inspiration from others around us, whether it's from YouTube, social media, friends, neighbors, family, church, whatever. That's why I share the things I do on our channel. And for someone to come on here and imply that I would dishonor my husband and go behind his back and post things without his knowledge, she almost made it out that I posted his grades to make fun of him and belittle him in front of the whole world. Clearly, she misunderstood the post because that was not the context of it. And I just wonder, let me stop. <laughs> My flesh is getting the best of me and that wouldn't have been a nice thing to say. And I felt the Lord say, no. Don't know what kind of life she lives or what kind of marriage she has that would ever make her jump to a conclusion like that. But I can assure you guys, Joe had no issue with me posting his picture of him in his surgical gown. Joe has no issue sharing our journey of vasectomy reversal and trying to have another baby. Joe's on board with it. It's our decision. It's our life. And if we're comfortable sharing it, that's all that matters. I don't need anybody's permission. I don't need to explain how we came to that decision. It's our choice. So that's enough of that. But I just want to put that out there because if there's one person out there thinking that there might be others, that this is too personal, we shouldn't be sharing it, or that I'm sharing these things without Joe's knowledge, that is the stupidest thing. The stupidest thing I've ever heard. I suppose there are women out there that do those things, but I'm not that woman. <laughs> so I respect my husband. I love my husband. And I'm so grateful for the sacrifice that he just went through 
for the opportunity and the chance for us to maybe get to have one more baby. What a selfless, selfless act that he just did for our family. We're excited about this journey. And I suppose some people, it's hard on social media. You get bombarded with these comments and sometimes you can start to doubt yourself and question yourself. I'm not going to do that. I know who I am. I know where we are. I am who I am and I'm not changing a thing. So guess what, Susan, you're going to get even more vasectomy and baby content, more pictures of Joe in his gown, <laughs> his surgical gown. I'm going to share what I want to share because I want to share it. And whoever doesn't like it can leave. Whoever likes it can stick around. That's just the way it goes, right? So I'm excited, you guys. The trip was good. The, the last half was a little hard, but we are doing well. You should have seen Joe and I laid up on the couch together, me with a rice sock on, him with, you know, that going on, drinking our coffee, watching our favorite shows because we couldn't move. <laughs> but we're doing much better now, and I so appreciate you guys being here for this adventure and uh, all the comments and prayers because it really does mean a lot to us. I love reading your comments, most of them. All right, you guys, I'm gonna go for now. Until next time, take care and stay blessed. And remember, you do you, boo. Don't worry about other people because there's always gonna be haters out there. For every hater, there's 5,000 people out there that love you to death. Remember that.